Take a moment and think to yourself, how would a community of people function effectively without the use of classic hierarchical structures? This is the sort of community that anarchists are interested in building for themselves and would even see become the common structure for the rest of society. While I myself am not an anarchist by the strictest sense, I have studied this philosophy closely and find several aspects of it to be worth considering. That being said, I also have a few criticisms of anarchism which I will be detailing throughout this video series. I will be doing my best to represent anarchism fairly and accurately, and am in no way attempting to present a straw man argument of this ideological framework. Some commonly misconceived ideas and malformed inquiries regarding anarchism are as follows. Without structure and law, wouldn't society just descend into chaos? How would anything get accomplished if no one is required to work in order to make a living? How could we buy and sell goods and services? Who would enforce the law if there's no police or military forces? Wouldn't everyone just be out for themselves, survival of the fittest, with no one holding each other accountable? Given that, historically, we have never had a working example of an anarchist society, no one really knows how one would work. Therefore, even if anarchists cannot claim to know for certain that some form of anarchism would definitely work, the same can be said of those who claim that it would never work. All I am interested in is having a discussion about the potential for a more free, equal, and just society than we currently have. Disagreement is welcome and even encouraged, as I will need to know what to expect from the citizens of such a community should they happen to have any criticisms of the organizational structure for which they are agreeing to be a part of. Detractors of anarchist theory often cite that living in such a lawless society would never work and that it is a pipe dream for lazy people unwilling to get a real job. At least these are the sentiments which I have personally been confronted with. In reality, the existence of anarchy isn't the absence of law and order. Rather, it is the resistance to unnecessary and abusive hierarchies. People would still do work, though it would be entirely voluntary, as opposed to the coerciveness of many jobs which force us to do hard work for very little pay or other incentives. Goods and services would therefore still be available, though money would be removed from the equation in order to prioritize the distribution of resources based upon who needs them rather than who can afford them. Law enforcement would still exist, though we would be less dependent upon a small group of highly trained armed forces and more dependent upon a social network of people who understand that many criminals are simply mentally ill or the victims of unfortunate circumstances. I think it's rather clear that anarchism doesn't entail a lack of structure altogether, or that there is nothing of substance holding us together as a community so that it isn't just every person out for themselves. However, I still haven't demonstrated that such a community is even feasible. It's mostly just hypothetical at this point, at least from the perspective of the average viewer. So in this video series, I will be presenting my proposal for a community which I intend to develop and treat as the testing grounds for the anarchist structure. As mentioned, I do have criticisms of anarchism, so the community itself will likely resemble something close to anarchism, yet still maintain its own unique flavor. My hope is to get the attention of other anarchists, whether they are fellow YouTubers, writers of anarchist literature, or anyone else invested in dismantling hierarchical structures that only exist for the purpose of control and profitability. I look forward to a thoughtful discussion in the comments, as that will help me to understand other perspectives beyond my own. I am in no way opposed to criticism, as I find it to be useful to exploring areas of my argumentation which I have taken for granted. For example, if you specifically think that most kinds of hierarchies are necessary and have good reasoning to back up your claim, then I do look forward to your criticism of anarchism, which is a system that seeks to dismantle hierarchies, which have already been demonstrated to be abusive and unnecessary to the enrichment of society. The fact that there is simultaneously a group of people in this country who are living in luxury, while others starve to death, die of treatable diseases, and are subject to higher rates of crime and incarceration, should be enough to at least question whether hierarchies are at all beneficial to society at large. Now in order to achieve this goal of mine, I have a Patreon account set up with three tiers of patronage. If you are interested in seeing my goals come to fruition, then I ask that you contribute in the manner that you see fit. A lot of time goes into research and editing raw video content, so these contributions are my incentive to keep doing that. If you cannot fit patronage into your budget, but still want to contribute in a meaningful way, then you can share my channel with your friends, family, co-workers, and other acquaintances, so that my viewership increases. Also, subscribing obviously helps, so go ahead and do that too. Even if you don't support anything that I am doing, but still want to be able to access my videos to make, let's say, a response video where you point out all the flaws in my argumentation, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel anyway so that you'll get updated when new content emerges. Some of you may be thinking, if you're really in support of dismantling capitalism because you recognize the injustices that inevitably emerge from such a system, 
Why are you participating in this system with your Patreon account? Doesn't that make you a hypocrite? Doesn't that prove that anarchism necessarily piggybacks off of capitalism in order to achieve its desired result? Why not just convince people with your arguments until everyone decides to stop participating in capitalism? While I acknowledge the reasons why capitalism should be dismantled, the fact remains that it is the system we currently have. I will use the resources available to me to achieve the desired result. It would be the same if we had a different style of government, or even no government at all. You are always forced to act within the boundaries of the world you live in. Change means adapting to one's surroundings in order to overcome injustices and inequality. Hypocrisy would entail that I'm behaving unethically while preaching a contradictory ethical message. The only thing I'm asking is to have willing participants contribute however they wish in a voluntary manner. I am not forcing anyone to work for me for slave wages, nor am I making anyone pay me an amount of money that would greatly impact their budget. I may be piggybacking off of capitalism, but like I mentioned, it is the system that is available to use. If we lived in a communist society, or a monarchy, or even a dictatorship, you might be saying that I was piggybacking off of those systems as well, in order to achieve my desired result. There's no harm in using the system in order to change the system, especially if that change is for the better. If we could afford to keep arguing the same points over and over again, until everyone is convinced of our position, and only then will we attempt to test the feasibility of the system we all believe will work, we are essentially putting the cart before the horse. We ought to begin implementing our methods right away, and test them to see if they would work in a controlled environment. If we are successful, then we should see how these methods can be applied to gradually larger environments and demonstrate to everyone that it works. If it isn't a feasible system, however, then it will fail and our arguments can be discredited by the evidence of our failure. Therefore, it isn't worth it to continue trying to argue our position until everyone, or even a majority, agrees with us. In the next video in this series, I will be analyzing the concept of hierarchies in more depth and discussing how they are applied within the current structure of society. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below, subscribe to this channel if you want to get updates on new content as it becomes available, Consider supporting me on Patreon if you value my work, and be sure to leave a comment below because community feedback is invaluable to the success of this channel. Until next time, thank you guys for watching.